Well, tell us, what are you looking at tonight? Well, the two biggest races in our region are two primaries with uh, lightning rod candidates, you might say. On the Democratic side, you have Joe Morrissey trying to keep his seat against a very formidable challenge from a former delegate, La Charisse Aird. And what's happened in that seat, Bill, is that almost all the Democratic establishment has come out for Aird, not for Morrissey. And so if Morrissey wins, he's not going to have much allegiance to the Democrats going forward, I don't think. No, but I want to pause there for a second. When we're talking about primaries, you're talking about Democrats voting for Democratic candidates and Republicans voting for Republican candidates. That's how it's Did supposed to go. But ah. in Virginia, since we don't have party registration, anybody can vote in any primary. And what we've seen in this race, particularly in the latter days, is that Joe Morrissey is trying to appeal uh, to Republicans to come out and vote for him, uh, particularly down in the southern part of the district in Dinwiddie and Prince George. So we'll have to see if that actually becomes a factor later this evening. Okay, now tell us about Senate District 12. Well, Senate District 12 is Amanda Chase, who calls herself Trump in heels. She's up against two um, opponents, Tina Ramirez, who's been on television an awful lot for the last couple of weeks, and then a former member of the General Assembly, Glenn Sturdivant, who's really backed by what you might call the Republican establishment. And the question here is whether Chase can hang on one more time against this sort of establishment uh, coalescing around an opponent for her. Now, if they should lose, if, say, Chase should lose her seat and Joe Morrissey lose his, can they turn around and run sort of as an independent candidate or run for the, say, Morrissey's case, run as a Republican, perhaps, in, in November? No, it's because I, th no, I think it's too late for that, for that to really happen. And these districts are in this fashion, that the district that Morrissey is in is a Democratic district. You're not going to be able to run, even if you could, as an independent or a Republican and win in that district. And the district uh, that Chase Sturdivant and Ramirez is running in is a strong Republican district. The Democrats will probably have some opposition there, but the Republicans, no matter who it would be, would be a heavy favorite in that district. And so does it, what are the implications for November if, I mean, because we're talking about sort of uh, individual party primaries, not necessarily shifting the balance of power tonight, mm. but does it have implications down the road? I think the Morrissey election has the largest implications down the road because the Democrats right now have a slim majority in the Senate. It's 22-18. If that went to 2020, the Republicans would have an effective majority because the tiebreaker is Lieutenant Governor Winston Sears. So in fact, if the Democrats just lost one seat to 2119, but Joe Morrissey was one of the 21, the Democrats would really have to worry about how he would vote on some really big ticket items regarding particularly abortion and K-12 education, where he has shown the willingness uh, to side with the other party on occasion there. So the Democrats, given all the effort they've put into removing Morrissey, would have to be very, very fearful if they had a 21-19 majority and number 21 with Joe Morrissey.